Good day everybody, Sebastian King's back with you with another Watch Our Wounds video. In this presentation, I am going to show you how I tackled GR3, uh, that special dungeon that requires marksmen, and in some situations, if you do have them, you can usually use fighters that can target aerial units. Now, I'm going to show you two the, the same strategy this diff, using two different compositions. One is my very pay to win one. And the other one, I'm going to be using one legendary, a piercing um, marksman. But the rest are epics. And I'm going to show you how good the epics can be in this particular dungeon. So to start here, I'm going to show you my composition. Uh, that I used to tackle this initially, which encompassed uh, several legendary. So you can see Silas here on the right hand side, Calypso on the left hand side. Right in the middle here, I'm going to position Arrogance because he's very good for the boss. He's a, a fighter that can tackle aerial units. So if you have somebody like Silitu or Aspen, you can do definitely uh, benefit from that. Right here in the back right now, I have Vierna as my backup in case anything slips through. I have Vortex here ready for the heals. And on the sides here, I have two marksmen that can do AOE bursts. And that is, of course, Nyx and Maul. So you saw Nyx just blow up the right hand side. Maul here is going to blow up the left hand side. And Silas went down, which is fine, but these two are doing a good enough job against the boss. So they brought him down. And on this side here, you saw Vortex is one of the healers. On the other one, I have Nisande. I like Nisande because she can get the attack speed revved up. So, that's our first, our first tackle. This the composition that I used for this. And of course, if you, if you are seeing this, you're going to say, well, that's a lot of legendaries. How can I actually tackle this? All right. Well... Let me show you the other composition that I brought in that included epics and only one legendary. Okay, so for this example, we're primarily using mostly epics. I am going to bring in Lunaria. I'm going to bring in Terrell. Do you win? Brain. Brain is a very good piercer, and I actually like her on using her on the spot against the boss. And then I'm going to bring, of course, Maul and Vortex. To get us a little bit of a stat boost, especially with Maul, and make sure that we have the left hand side very well taken care of, I'm just using the Soldi uh, here for the extra stat boost. Uh, most of my um, the units that I'm going to use are these five here at top and the three here in the bottom. And remember, if you're already tackling this content here, 18, unless you're really, really unlucky, I would imagine that you have at least one marksman that is legendary so if you have a piercer you use them in the center if you have one of the aoe legendaries then you use them on the sides so i'm using for the sides i'm going to use maul and teowin if you have nyx if you have rasak those are the the units that you can use here on the side because they have that aoe damage in the middle, if you don't have as many marksmen, that's when you bring in the, the 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 fighter that can tackle aerial units and use that to your advantage. But you can see here in this example, I'm just using the marksman. Uh, you don't have any mages, and uh, I'm bringing in two healers. And for this example, I did not bring in arrogance or any uh, one of the fighters, given that they are legendary. Right? So I want you to just appreciate how much Breen and Silas were able to do with those waves. Breen is phenomenal when it comes to being a piercer. And if you can protect her enough, she'll help you immensely in this content. I already have the boss at 50% with these two. And then here, of course, I have Terrell in the back because I want to back up just in case anything slid through. But Breen was just doing doing most of the stuff by, by, her, by herself with Silas. All right, sides. 
Now, I'm putting Theo in. And Maul. They're the ones that I'm going to use to protect. So I thought about using the Loris there for a minute. But I decided that I wanted to give Silas a little bit more of a boost. So I still use Nisandi for that. So she's a healer over here. And I'm using Vortex to protect these three over here. So you can see on the sides now. Theon and Maul are just blowing it up. So, in case anything got slipped here by Theowen, now I have Lunaria backing him up. So now I have three on the left hand side, three on the right hand side. We don't have to worry too much about the boss. And from here, it's just making sure we activate the heals whenever possible and uh, we protect them. Ultimates at the right time. So when there's still cluster here, if I can use malls, I'm going to use malls. If I can use steel, when uh, use steel. When. So mall pretty much takes care of that side now for us. Green is the backup. Terrell is the backup as well. And Theo went took care of the right hand side, and that was GR three eighteen with one legendary. Definitely. There are various strategies that you can use here. I just used all marksmen and a couple of healers. And as I showed you previously, my composition had the fighter at the middle that can tackle aerial units. So, and on the sides, if you want to use another healer like Dolores, um, then you just need to make sure that you protect your side units as much as possible so they can deal with the side wave. Okay, so you're probably wondering about the gearing and what the, uh, the 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 exact possible requirements that you're going to need are going to be. As you can see, for uh, Theowen, uh, is pretty much around a thousand attack, uh, ten thousand attack is what I was shooting for to make sure they had as much crit damage as possible. I wasn't worried too much about the crit the critical damage, but of course, if you add a little bit, it will help in the damage. Primarily, you just want to make sure that you get the attack defense check first before you add the critical damage. And for these later stages, this is when you start worrying a little bit about crit rate. So for this gear that I have on him, you can see that the right hand side, there's no particular set here. But if you can get uh, the set that multiplies your AoE damage, that would be the one that I would go for. Um, I think it's the stick set. And then here on the right hand side, I just had him in Calamity. That was that's the attack boost let's go to Terrell Terrell again I have her in the calamity set here no particular set here on the right hand side I was going for stats over sets uh, she has around 8.5 attack and 80 percent critical rate and then of course about uh, 200 critical damage you can see her uh, rage regeneration was not that high for this particular stage. Green, one of my favorite person, uh, one of my favorite piercers in this uh, in this game. When it comes to the left hand side, no particular set. I was just going stats over sets at least for this build. Uh, same one here on the right hand side. Again, about eight thousand attack and. Uh, keep in mind that I did add uh, critical rate up to 95 and uh, rate generation is about 10% in this example here. For the later stages, you, you are going to want to uh, increase your uh, attack speed to be around the 200 and uh, even 300 marks in some situation and a little bit more rate, uh, rate re regeneration. Oh, one more thing. So let me go back here to Theowen. And he just had the uh, watch guards disguise uh, for the artifact. And essentially, it's just the extra stats that I'm looking for there. Terrell, she had Terrell's gaze. Again, pretty much the stats. I do not have this leveled up. And Green only had the war song. So, again, I'm just going for stats here. Now, let's go back. Uh, let me show you another epic here Lunaria. 
So Lunaria, again, uh, left-hand side, stats of her sets. And in this one, I gave her the one that increases damage by 6% or um, up to 5 stacks for every enemy within the attack range. It just ended up working that way with this particular setup. But again, she has about uh, 9,700 attack, uh, 220 attack speed, some critical damage. But again, I tried to get as close to uh, 100% on the crit rate as possible. Maul. Uh, again, on the left hand side, I did not have the Calamity set, so it was pretty much stats here. And then here, uh, pretty the same thing, the curse set uh, for him. You can even see some of the pieces I haven't ruled up to 16 yet. And I just kind of put it on, but uh, he has about 7.3 attack. Again, crit rate in the 85% range. So I tried to get as much as possible. And there's certainly room for improvement here. But you can see, you, you saw that how, how good he did on the left hand side, taking care of the, the side waves as uh, much as he could. Uh, you can use your epics definitely. Uh, to tackle this content you know if you have one of the great legendaries uh when it comes to the marksman that uh, do the aoe burst you if you have centrum uh, yeah you, you're gonna beat this content very well uh you can use hatsu hatsu you can use her anywhere uh and of course then nyx uh, she has that aoe burst as i showed you in the first example so those are the legendaries that you can use in that regard Calypso is very good when it comes to the, the boss and you, the piercing uh, mechanic and try to take that down. So that's why I decided to use her in my regular composition before I stripped her and gave it to Tailwind. That will do it for this presentation on GR3. If you have any other strategies, please share them. Comment below. If you have any questions, post them below. If you found this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe. It does help grow the channel. And I will see you all next time on another Watcher of Realms video.